I am Dr. John Padfield. I'm a business professor and a former Indiana State Representative. And this is Business Reform, where I discuss issues at the intersection of business, health, and the environment. This video is especially important to me. Number one, it's about an important topic. Number two, it's about a big story that took place on September 28, 2022, although there's a very good chance you've never heard of it yet. And number three, the company at the center of this story is to be applauded for their integrity, for their courage, and for their decisive action to correct a problem that, had it gone unchecked, could result in negative consequences around the world for the next two generations. The company I am talking about is the publishing company Hindawi. Hindawi is based in Egypt, but it was purchased in 2021 by the American publishing company John Wiley & Sons. John Wiley & Sons, commonly known as Wiley, is one of the largest publishers of college textbooks in the world, and they are especially well known for their medical and scientific textbooks. Hindawi is one of the world's largest fully open access academic journal publishers. Hindawi publishes over 230 peer-reviewed scientific journals on a wide variety of medical and technical subjects, including advances in cell and gene therapy, advances in pharmacological and pharmaceutical sciences, advances in virology, advances in public health, the Journal of Environmental and Public Health, and over 225 other journals. I want to stop for just a moment and explain what peer-reviewed means. When a person or a team has been conducting research, they reach a conclusion, they write an article to publicize what they have been doing, and they submit that article to a publisher for review. The publisher then recruits a small group of peer reviewers. These reviewers are often university professors who are recognized for their knowledge in the subject matter of the article under review. It is the job of the peer reviewers to carefully read the methodology, study the raw data that was collected, review the analysis of that data, and then examine the results and assess the conclusions contained in the submitted article to make sure the conclusions are supported by the data and the analysis. The job of the peer reviewer is to ensure the integrity of the research and protect the reputation of the publisher by either suggesting edits to or completely rejecting articles that contain errors, use poor methodology, or possibly used a biased sample. A common problem with articles is when authors overstate their results. An example of overstating results would be a study in which a nutritional supplement is given to 12 college-age healthy male athletes, and because it seems to help their athletic performance without causing any medical problems, the researcher concludes the nutritional supplement would be safe and effective for everyone. While that nutritional supplement may be helpful to a 65-year-old man with chemical dependency and liver disease, because no such person was a part of the study, there would not be anything in the study to suggest that that supplement would be safe and effective for that group of people. Or theoretically, another example of overstating results might involve studying the effects of giving a vaccine booster to eight mice and then concluding that booster is safe and effective for all humans. I couldn't have made that last example up if I tried. While I have never been a peer reviewer for Hindawi, I have a PhD from an R1 research university, and I have served several times as a peer reviewer for another publisher. So I am speaking from firsthand experience about the role of a peer reviewer. Peer-reviewed journals are considered the gold standard in scientific research, and the peer review process is of monumental importance in maintaining the integrity of academic and scientific research. That is what makes what Hindawi just did of such significance. On September 28, 2022, Hindawi announced on their website they are retracting 511 papers published in 16 of their journals since August 2020. In June of 2020, the Hindawi Research Integrity Team identified irregularities in the peer review process in a small number of journals by leveraging new analytical capabilities underlying the reviewer activity database. Hindawi goes on to say that they spotted suspicious activity, and when they began investigating, they found unethical activity among some of the peer reviewers. They also stated, quote, as our investigation progresses, we anticipate more retractions. I want to make it perfectly clear. 
I am in no way mocking this incident or trying to portray Hindawi in a bad light. Just the opposite. I absolutely applaud what they have done. They are a role model of integrity. With that said, I did an internet search using both DuckDuckGo, my preferred search engine, and Google in an attempt to find any mainstream media coverage of this story. I could not find a single mention of this story on CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, ABC, NBC, CBS, New York Times, Washington Post, etc. Not a single word from any of them. By the way, if you're wondering how I found out about this story, I get my news from multiple sources, one of which is a paid subscription to the Epic Times. The Epic Times is the only media outlet I have seen who covered this story, and I have placed a link to their website in the show notes. The reason I am so passionate about this topic is because peer-reviewed research and academic journals are the building blocks of future research. For the past couple of years, we have repeatedly been told by politicians, celebrities, media figures that we need to follow the science, as if science is something carried down from a mountaintop written on stone tablets. It is not. Science is discovered little by little by humans who are sometimes lazy, sloppy, mistaken, or who may have conflicts of interest. Papers based on poor research methodologies or biased conclusions that get published today can shape both public policy and future research for generations to come. One of the hallmarks of real science is it's repeatable. If someone conducts an experiment and they publish their methodology and their results, someone else should be able to take that article and go out and replicate it. They should be able to perform that same experiment and they should be able to get the same results. If the results cannot be duplicated, that casts a large shadow of doubt over the original experiment and the original conclusions. I am a big believer in science, but real science takes time. Real science is not subject to politics. Real science is not democratic. It does not depend upon what the majority of scientists believe about something. Real science is based on evidence. What appears to have happened in Hindawi's case is that some reviewers and editors colluded and formed what are called review rings where they collude and they pass papers that do not meet the academic standards that are normally required for publication. These peer review rings often involve researchers who are personal friends with one another or who have some other overlapping interests together and they give each other a free pass to help things get through the peer review system. Why would someone participate in a peer review ring? There could be many reasons. If the person is a professor, professors are required to get articles published for tenure and for promotion. If the researcher is not a professor, they may still need to get published in order to keep the funds coming for their research. Still, other researchers may have an agenda they want to promote, or they may have a conflict of interest that is dependent upon publishing results. At least 511 peer-reviewed articles are being retracted by Hindawi, but don't think for a moment that this issue is just a Hindawi issue. Corrupted science goes far beyond Hindawi. Retraction Watch is a not-for-profit organization that watches scientific and medical journals and they note and document whenever something is retracted. Recently, Retraction Watch has published articles about a number of different publishers that have had problems and it had to issue retractions. The Institute of Physics recently announced it was retracting 494 papers. Sage Publications is retracting 60 papers over a peer review and citation ring and PLOS1 is retracting over 100 papers because of a rigged peer review process. And I previously mentioned politicians, celebrities, and media figures who constantly told us to follow the gourd, the holy gourd of Jerusalem. No, not the holy gourd of Jerusalem. They told us follow the science. So let's just see where the COVID-19 science would have led us if we followed all of that science. Well, according to an article in the Journal of Nanoparticle Research, oh, wait a minute, that COVID article's been retracted. Let's try another. According to an article in the Journal of Pharmacy and Bioallied Sciences, oh, wait, that COVID article's also been retracted. Well, there's an article about COVID in the journal Computers and Biology and Medicine that, no, wait, that one's been retracted too. Well, here's one from the Journal of Infection and Public Health, oops, 
looks like that one's been retracted too. Ah, here's a good one. The New England Journal of Medicine reported, uh, what's that say? It's about cardiovascular disease, drug therapy, and mortality in COVID-19, but what's that red bar say? This article has been retracted. I think you get the point. As of the date of this recording, October 18th, 2022, Retraction Watch has documented 265 COVID articles that have been retracted. This slide just shows the first 25 of a very, very long list. That is 265 pieces of peer-reviewed science that we were supposed to follow that have all been retracted. Again, I am not anti-science. I am anti-junk science. I earned my PhD in technology leadership and innovation, and I know how to conduct legitimate scientific research. I have served as the graduate committee chairman for several doctoral students at a R1 research university. I am a huge believer in real science. I just haven't seen much of it in the media or coming out of the mouths of politicians in the last couple of years. If you think corrupted science is bad, wait till you see my next video on corrupted evidence. It turns out publishers aren't the only institutions plagued by unethical conduct, fraud, and pseudoscience. In my next video, I will discuss several major crime lab scandals that put false evidence in front of jurors in tens of thousands of criminal cases and sent innocent people to prison. Subscribe and turn on notifications to make sure you are notified when I publish new videos. I am also available as a keynote speaker for your event or organization. If you'd like to contact me, my LinkedIn profile is linked in the show notes for this video. A recurring theme on this channel is choose wisely. And for this video, I want to encourage you to make a conscious decision to get your news from multiple sources, including at least one independent news source. My personal choice is Epic Times. Also, if you are interested in keeping up on scientific and medical journals that are retracting papers, I encourage you to visit and support retractionwatch.com if you want to stay informed about these issues. If you enjoyed this video, please click that like button. If you subscribe, leave a like, and leave a comment, you will automatically be entered in a drawing for one of four American-made filtered water bottles worth $45 when this channel hits the subscriber milestone shown below. Thanks for watching and remember, choose wisely.